Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Reference Recordings. And today we are talking about a special niche in the world of reference recordings, and that is editions or projects that were designed to be reference recordings. Sometimes they were and sometimes they weren't, but it wasn't as hard as you might think because there was a period which really sort of ended around the late 1970s when you could make a reference edition because there was no competition and there were very good conductors willing to do it. And, and the composers even were, you know, somewhat familiar. I mean, let me, let me just get to it. You'll see what I mean when I talk about it. Here it is. The Jean Martinon Debussy and Ravel Complete Orchestral Works Collections. Now, these were originally two different series, but they came out around the same time, 1974 and 1975. And so they were designed specifically to be comprehensive reference editions for all of the orchestral music by these two composers. And they didn't include every single teeny little scrappy things, but there were things here that you didn't hear very frequently that hadn't been recorded much before that were rarities and that made these particularly desirable. Now, Martinon himself was, as we know, an amazing conductor whose reputation has only grown over the years. I mean, he was really, he had a composer's ear, um, somewhat like Pierre Boulez, but he also had a little bit of warmth and humanity to sort of mellow things out. He recorded tons and tons of French repertoire, virtually the entire modern French repertoire from the first half of the 20th century for Erato and EMI. And really, it was, it was a tremendous legacy. Now, these sets, when they came out, there were multiple performances of La Mer and the Ravel's Bolero and all of this other stuff, right? I mean, billions and billions of recordings, even then in the 70s. So the way to make these things distinctive, of course, was to couple them, interestingly, with lesser known pieces. And when we go through these things disc by disc, you'll see, I'll show you what they were. I'll, I can tell you what they were, the things that we didn't hear all that often or that were hard to find. And all of a sudden you had this, this wonderful edition. And so it naturally became the reference. And it still is, by the way. Lots of other people have done complete Ravels and complete Debussy's since then. Um, and some of them have been absolutely excellent, but that has not displaced these recordings as the reference editions. So there you go. So let's start with, let's see, is Ravel, let's see, Debussy, let's do Debussy first. Okay, here we have it. Four discs of Debussy. So you've got on disc one, you have sort of the more popular things and a few interesting tidbits. You've got La Mer, the Nocturnes, the Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn, the March Écossaise, and the Bersou's Héroïque, and then his Music for King Lear, which is only a fanfare and Le Sommeil de Lear, Lear's Sleep. It's only five minutes of music, but when was the last time you heard it? It was interesting, it was curious, it was something different. Then we've got Je, and the, the three images, and then Printemps, which was quite unusual back in the day. Printemps is gorgeous. It was orchestrated by Henri Bousset, and it's just a lovely, lovely work in two parts with a piano duet in the middle of it, and just really, really pretty. So there's that. Then we have some the weird stuff. Orchestrations, Children's Corner, orchestrated by Caplet, the Petite Suite, orchestrated by Bousset the Danse Sacrée et Danse Profane, which is Debussy's own thing, and then La Boîte à Joujou, the ballet orchestrated by Caplet. These are all rarities um, and things that you didn't find all over the place. And of course, you know, because they were orchestrations, they tended to be regarded as not by Debussy, which meant that other Debussy complete things would leave them out. But this was an inclusive edition, and that's one of the things that made it special. Then we've got the piano fantasy, as good as unknown in the early 70s, and a gorgeous piano concerto, really a beautiful three movement concerto that nobody knew and cared or cared about. And let's see, the clarinet rhapsody, the saxophone rhapsody, La Plus Que Lente with its symbolum part, you know, and Kama, the ballet orchestrated by Kirk Lat, and finally the, the, the Tarantelle Stylienne orchestrated by Ravel. And there you have it. I mean, that was Debussy. Lots of the two discs really worth of stuff that you almost never heard. 
And that made this help to make this edition because of its uniqueness, a reference um, and the performances, which were marvelous and just really first class performances all the way through. Ravel was similar. Let's look at Ravel. We have Bolero. You let off with Bolero, of course. And Barks through the Ocean, yeah. And, and Mother Goose, ah, with the harps. The harps at the end of Mother Goose. Oh my God, was that something. Um, El Barada del Gracioso and the Rhapsody Espanol. Okay, it's fairly normal Ravel disc. Then we get the Scheherazade Overture, as opposed to the Song Cycle, which was as good as unknown back in the day. La Valse, Le Tombeau de Couperin, Minuet Antique, the Pavane for a Dead Princess, and the Valse Noble et Sentimental. Another normal Ravel thing. Daphnis and Chloe, which of course everyone was doing. And you got here the two piano concertos and Tsigana with, with Isaac Perlman, no less. Now, I happen to think Tsigana is the worst thing Ravel wrote, but there you go. A couple, a couple unusual tidbits, not a ton. But the piano concerto is thrown in, and, and the Tsigana, and uh, well, I think Ciccolini is the pianist and all that stuff. They're quite good. They're very good. And there you have it. So you have Debussy and Ravel, all of their orchestral stuff in, you know, really fine performances featuring the Orchestre National de l'ORTF and the Orchestre de Paris. The sonics were not top-notch. The DBC sounds better than the Ravel. Generally speaking, the Ravel lacks a little bass and whatnot, but the performances are second to none, uniformly. And so these were on LPs, four, I think they were four or five LP sets in boxes. And then on CD, they combined them, which made an automatic CD reference. And the thing that makes these things so marvelous, I mean, they were, I remember getting them as individual discs, not in boxes. Um, they were available as individual LPs, and I had them that way. But the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is they were in print. They were in print and available since the 70s, which gave this set the opportunity to become, you know, the reference edition. And some of you have said, are there any references that were like later than, you know, date X? And the answer is, yeah, it depends when they were done, and it depends on what they were. Um, you would think that DBC and Ravel, popular as they are, um, would have reference recordings for most of their most popular works, and some of them they did. And we'll talk about some of those. We may talk about La Mer and some other things, you know, down the road and some Daphne and Chloe. We I think we already did or we could talk about. The bottom line is we did do Daphne and Chloe, didn't we? Yeah, so, yeah, there were individual reference recordings for individual works, but there was a difference between doing it as an individual work by work basis on an individual basis and doing it as a set, as a collection. Um, and yeah, there you go. A library edition that went in the reference section of the library. That's what this is. Um, and it still sounds great. And it's still, every bit is v valid and worthwhile as anything that came afterwards. So there you go, my friends, the reference edition for DBC and Ravel editions. Keep on listening, friends, and take care.